that we have not yet asked salary increase for medical interns or for doctors, but it is contained in our new CBA, which has not been negotiated. Therefore, this is what has been paid for the last seven years. It is just a shock to us that then it's being reduced in 2024. It's a concern. By a third, By a third actually, in 2024. Okay, that's uh, Dr. Davji Atala, the uh, Secretary General KMPDU. And I want us to tie the point because the officials that have come, and um, first of all, Senator Ledamal Lekine is talking about um, the travel allowances, uh, travel expenditure rather. And in 2022 2023, the half year expenditure by the national government was 8.1 billion shillings. The half year for 2023-2024 was 11.4 billion shillings, a difference of 3.3 billion shillings. And these are figures according to the control of budget. So if it is possible to raise travel exp expenditure year, year on year by 3.3 billion shillings, when doctors ask for 2.4 billion shillings more to make it 4.8 billion shillings, why is this so difficult? We, but that's the, like I said, we need to also come to the table. And then be able, like uh, Oladama, he sits on the health committee. His uh, health is devolved. Your numbers are wrong. Why? You, you are giving numbers for 2022. For 2023, it was 11.38 billion. That's what I said. You said eight. No, I said 8.1 rose to 11.4 okay. billion shillings. Okay. Yeah. 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 The rose, you swallowed the words. Okay. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Go ahead. So really what serious. happens is we should be telling ourselves as, as parliamentarians and as him sitting in Senate, and he remembers Senate uh, is oversight devolution and mm. uh, because and, and health is devolved. That is where you should be saying, in our role, this is the proposal that we are giving, that we remove the money from here and move it here. And, <laughs> and you should be asking, you should be telling the doctors, because it's not going to happen overnight. Remember, the action has to come back to parliament. So instead of telling the doctors to remain on the street, you should be persuading them, in order to save lives, please go back to work. But you are willing to still negotiate on this. And even then, I, I think I, I saw in what was, was suggested, the proposal by government, and I would be. I beg the doctors to accept it. That in, the, the interns, mm. you, when you're an intern, you have to do the internship in order to qualify as a doctor, so that you can be able to now practice. So you're actually under training during that internship program, but they are being guaranteed that they will be absorbed when they become doctors, which is better than the current situation where you're highly paid as an intern, you complete your internship, but when it comes. At the point of uh, being hired, we had last time we, we had almost 2,000 doctors who were not employed. I think the last, in the last strike, there were 2,000 doctors who were unemployed. And that time they were demanding, they wanted those doctors to be employed. So it, it, it just needs. S sorry, um, Honorable Boss, might we be confusing terms here? Because you're saying that you have to go through internship to qualify as a doctor. They're already doctors. No, to get a practice They're coming here for internship so that they are registered. Yes, for so, licensing. Yeah, for licensing, yeah. But can you practice medicine without a license? No. It's like the way I can finish law school. If I don't have my internship pupillage, I cannot get my admission to the bar, which allows me to practice. But what are you saying? You can trust these people to be able to save a dying Kenyan but you cannot be able to, to compensate them. them. You tell them now you cannot practice medicine. What exactly the are comp they doing? The compensation, I mean, I think here, what is, be, what is the give and take yeah. is that you may earn less now, but be guaranteed that you'll be absorbed. Whereas you can earn a lot as an intern, and then when you finish, you're not hired, what is that which has guarantee? been the case. What is that guarantee? It is part of what actually was offered to them on the table that they will be absorbed. That's what I'm asking, how do you assure, because health is devolved, mm -hmm. how can you assure them that they are going to be employed in the health sector? It, it, they, it was, it's, that has always been the bone of contention because of the amount of money that was being put in to hire full-time full doctors. So I, if you look from the negotiations they've had at the moment, yep. that is what has been put on the table. And if I was a doctor, I would say, I, I was as an intern, i say I'd rather have less as an intern, but be sure that I'll get employment. Because at the moment, many mm. doctors were left unemployed okay. in the last strike. All right, horrible boy. So it should not be an it should be an issue that it. Uh, and, and again, we tell ourselves, if there isn't any money at the moment, again you can discuss it and say 
you know, we can increase, we can give you money, I mean, increase this next time and the next time. Right. At each budget cycle, hopefully we'll reach where we want to achieve. Okay. If it's not possible. Honorable Mboy, at the end of the day, whatever people talk about, whether it is the whole of national approach or it is in studios like here we are, it is the National Assembly that is going to allocate resources for whatever function that you talk about. Have we heard you really in terms of even advancing this conversation to an extent that we may find a solution because they're just about to go and write the budget for um, the next cycle. Yeah, it's uh, ongoing. You know, Sam, I, I, I agree with you, but uh, remember what uh, Lekina has said first and foremost, that uh, health is devolved and uh, parliament uh, holistically uh, through the Senate uh, committee on health have already started the investigations. The National Assembly is also going to follow suit and make sure that we also get to the bottom of this. But at the end of the day, the most important thing to note is that uh, government needs to, 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 to step up. You know, there's a lot of there's a lot of game of words. Even when I, we sit in this studio, the more the more we discuss this, the more I think people are digging themselves into some kind of hole because Deputy Speaker has uh, even challenged the Senate to reorganize the budget. That is not the preserve of the of the Senate. <laughs> It's no, actually the preserve of the National <laughs> Assembly because they or Lekina can go to Senate and they can figure out where to take money from. They don't do that. They only deal with the division of revenue bill and the and the county allocation. But of what Lekina so can do is rationalize the county's public services. They're not, they're not, able, to they're not yes. able to re reorganize the budget. And then again, uh, when 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 uh, when we say that you value doctors, I I, I know the, for a fact that the executive walked out on a negotiation uh, whatever a meeting. Uh, what, what does that tell us? Does that, does that tell us they're valuing them? Uh, how do you say you value doctors when you refuse to honor a seven-year-old CBA? How do you say you value doctors when the first time the doctors went on the streets, they were beaten? They were actually beaten. The head, the leader, ended up in a hospital Secretary with serious General. injuries. The Secretary General. So how do you say you value doctors? I think the problem we have is that we, we are running this country with, with impunity. And, and, and over, over, over and above the travel, the travel budget, mm. uh, you, you, you will notice that uh, the, the, the presidency, also the budget keeps going up. And I keep asking myself, I mean, is, is, are we building a new state house every year? So why is this money going? Because uh, running, the, running the presidency shouldn't be costing so much money. But, but, there's but, enough, but, but, money, but, but, there's but, enough money for people to have a cup of tea. The and, house which you uh, sit in passed that budget. Yeah. You know, you know, you know, you know, you know, I, will, I have always raised my voice. Not so the, beauty, the beauty is that, uh, the beauty is that Hansard is there. <laughs> and, and the deputy speaker knows one of the people who must say no to some of these excesses is me. And, and unfortunately, every time I come to the show, somebody accuses me. And, and, and I don't know why, but I, I, have always, I have always, and I will continuously speak on behalf of the people because I think the presidency should not be taking up so much money, so much money from this budget at the, at the, at the expense of doctors, at the expense of people who are losing their lives. Wow. Okay. So now, the medical interns, once they report, they'll be doing internal medicine, including dermatology, for 11 weeks. Dermatology, I hope I read that right. Mm -hmm. Surgery, including ENT and ophthalmology, for 11 weeks. Pediatric and child health, for 11 weeks. Obstetrics and gynecology, for 11 weeks. Mental health, for 8 weeks. Community health, for 4 weeks. Total is 52 uh, weeks. For dental interns, oral and maxillofacial <coughs> facial surgery, 11 <coughs> weeks. Prosthetics and conservative dentistry, 11 weeks. Uh, periodontology, 11 weeks. Pediatric dentistry and orthodontics for 11 weeks. Community dentistry for four weeks and total is 48, but, uh, 48 weeks. But also, um, on the question of uh, the roles, they have a whole of 19 responsibilities that they are supposed to do, including be the first contact with patients admitted in the ward. Uh, perform relevant investigations like drawing uh, blood, sorry, or during relevant radiologic examinations. During, uh, I mean, during ward rounds, there's also